Hello. In this slideshow, we're going to have a look at the different types of sampling plans for QC inspections. This slideshow accompanies a blog post, and if you'd like to read that post in more detail, you can follow the link that you see on the slide now. What is a sampling plan? A sampling plan allows an auditor or researcher to study a group. For example, a batch of products or a segment of the population by observing only a part of that group and to reach conclusions with a predefined level of certainty. More relevantly for importers and manufacturers, in QC inspections, a sampling plan will commonly use random sampling so quality inspectors can check larger amounts of products quickly and effectively. For this purpose, is random sampling always necessary? Well, actually, no. It really depends on the value and amount of goods being inspected by your quality inspector. So if we look at luxury watches as an example, if you've got an order of 50 luxury watches, all of these would be inspected one by one by the quality inspector because the cost of them warrants that they spend that bit of time checking every one. And of course, with an order of just 50, it's possible to do so. However, in larger orders of cheaper products, it's not going to be possible to check them one by one. So if we look at the example of four container loads of Christmas baubles, which cost 25 cents each, you're looking at thousands and thousands of these items. So in this case, checking a smaller sample of them makes far more sense. Let's look at random sampling in a little bit more detail then, since we've been talking about it. So here's a visual representation of random sampling. You can see on the left in the large circle, you've got the population. So in this case, it's an entire production batch of products. Then you've got the little X's that occur throughout this population. So these are the units that are picked randomly throughout the batch by your inspector. And those go into the sample, which is the circle on the right, and that's what's going to be checked for quality. Your quality inspector then is using a sampling plan, and a good sampling plan relies on statistics to help a quality inspector to firstly decide how many pieces to pick for inspection, secondly to decide what number of defective units is too many, and thirdly to help them know how certain they are to make the right decision in their findings. Let's talk about statistical sampling plans. You might say, well, why not just use 10% of the batch at random and check those pieces? Actually, if you don't use statistics to help predict sample size and defect rate, you're leaving yourself at a disadvantage. For example, you won't be able to make the link between your plan and your risk as the buyer and you'll have no previously agreed rule to decide if your supplier should take action if a percentage of the samples are found to be defective. Fortunately, statisticians have been hard at work on this topic and have been coming up with simple tools like the AQL tables for practitioners since the 1930s. So here are three situations that might be familiar to importers and manufacturers. The first one is you buy a batch of products and you want to use the most common sampling plan to help with QC inspections. Well, the most popular plan was developed in the 1930s in the USA and was formalized in standards MIL-STD 105E, ISO 2859-1 and ANSI Z1.4. Many importers simply call this an AQL inspection. So what is an AQL inspection? AQL stands for acceptance quality limit, and that's the quality level that is the worst tolerable in ISO 2859-1. So this represents the maximum number of defective units allowed to be found in the inspection, beyond which a batch is rejected. Importers usually set different AQLs for critical, major, and minor defects. And a good thing here is that most Asian exporters, so that's your suppliers, are familiar with this type of setting in inspections. 
So if you remember earlier on, we spoke about the need to be able to have predefined limits. That's what your AQL is going to be. So if you find that there are too many critical defects, you're able to take that up with your supplier and get them to take action based on the inspection. So how do we define an AQL? Well, these things called the AQL tables exist, and these have been devised since the 1930s. What your product inspector will do is check these tables and define what limits they're going to be using in the inspections. So they use them to decide how many samples to check out of the batch, the number of critical defects allowed, so that's the totally unacceptable quality products, the number of major defects allowed, these would be products which are usually considered unusable by the end user, and then the number of minor defects allowed. These are defects which most end users would accept. Typically used AQL settings for consumer goods in China are 0% critical defects, 2.5% major defects, and 4% minor defects. Actually, I can show you an example of this using the Southeast AQL calculator. And a tip here is, if you don't want to use the AQL tables, you can actually use that calculator, which works out the numbers easily for you. And you can just follow that link that you see on the page now. Also, if you download this slideshow, you can watch the video and learn more about AQL inspections in detail as long as you're connected to the internet. What's the second situation? Well, that is if you are a manufacturing organization who wants to follow good practices. Manufacturers can follow three plans and their inspection locations to weed out defects during production. Here's a visible representation of that. You can see that defects are wider towards the top. So you've got incoming inspections. Then in process inspections, they start to slim down a bit. And then final inspections, you're finding very few defects. And there are three recommended approaches which we're going to go into next. First of all, acceptance sampling in incoming inspections, then statistical process control in in-process inspections, and finally, acceptance sampling in final inspections. So first of all, incoming inspections for manufacturers. Well, you need a cost-effective way of checking a number of batches. So a recommended approach here is an AQL inspection. And we've just covered that earlier in the slideshow. If you purchase batches of products from an external company, and those batches are made in a continuous or semi-continuous manner with no changes in process or components, it does make sense to do AQL inspections. If you're connected to the video and watching this slideshow on your computer, you can learn a lot more about the way the statistics behind AQL inspections actually work by watching that video. Second, in-process control. So the recommended approach here for manufacturers is usually a combination of statistical process control. So this would be a C or P control chart. We're not going to go into that in this slideshow. Or product controls. So for example, this would be a continuous sampling plan. Let's look in more detail at what a continuous sampling plan is. So that would be MILSTD1235B. This approach makes sense when these conditions are met. So first of all, the inspection is quick and results are known very quickly. No destructive tests are involved. And product quality is known to be relatively stable. And finally, products are identical. So that's the same materials going through the same process under the same specifications. They can be made in continuous flow or in batches. 
A continuous sampling plan consists of several phases. In the beginning, each piece is checked. So that's a 100% check. Then, after a certain number of pieces have been found to be satisfactory, only certain pieces are checked randomly. So that's the sampling. And then if a piece is found to be defective, it goes back to screening. And if screening lasts for a long time, meaning defective units are often being found, the priority is to improve the process and or to set up testing at the source to catch issues immediately. A good visual representation of a continuous sampling plan is shown here. You can pause the screen and take a good look at that. Also, if you'd like to watch a video where we explain how a continuous sampling plan works in more detail, you can go ahead on this slide and we head on through to final inspections. If you're a manufacturer and you still want to filter here in order to stop batches that still have defects occurring even at the end of production. The right approach to doing this depends on your situation. If you're in general consumer goods, setting AQR limits a bit tighter than what your customer would select is often good enough. However, if you can't afford to ship even a few defective goods, an acceptance on zero plan makes far more sense. An acceptance on zero sampling plan. What is it? Well, some importers who are sensitive to legal litigation by their customers or who have high quality standards accept batches only if no defective unit is found. This is common in industries such as automotive or pharmaceutical. In some cases, the producer itself adopts this type of approach for its outgoing quality control. What are the differences between acceptance on zero and the traditional acceptance plan? So that's ISO 2859-1 or ANSI Z1.4. Well, first, there are no inspection levels. And secondly, rejection is always as soon as one defective unit is found. A big advantage of an acceptance on zero sampling plan is that fewer samples need to be checked. In principle, it only makes sense if the process has a capability index, CP, of at least 1.67. In simple terms, the key characteristics of the product are measured and they fall within the specifications in the vast majority of cases. You can learn more about acceptance on zero plans by watching the video below as well. Just make sure that you've got the slideshow on your computer and you're connected to the internet. There are even more sampling plans to be aware of. And we're not going to cover all sampling plans used for quality control purposes here, but here are some of the others. So far, the plans we've mentioned earlier are by attributes, which classify the samples as either non-defective or defective. However, if a plan is by variables, it allows for a finer evaluation. For example, the length of the product is measured and the exact findings are taken into account when a decision is made. A rectifying is applicable if the defects that are found can be corrected immediately. This takes into account the fact that the batch is of higher quality after the inspection and, in the case of inspection failure, the whole batch should be inspected Are you in a position where you need a quality assurance partner who can advise you about your sampling plan? Well, Southeast provides quality assurance solutions to clients across China and Southeast Asia who are both buyers and manufacturers. You can follow the links that you're seeing on this page to learn more and get a quotation if you'd like. So you can see that product inspection solutions are provided, 100% inspection, repacking, and shipping and quality assurance consulting, which might be handy if you need help with sampling plans. Also, don't miss any blog posts and resources from the companies we're related to here at qualityinspection.org. So you've got our own regular blog posts, 
But we also blog and have a lot of free resources for importers and manufacturers at Southeast too. So there's the blog, also the resources library, and at Syn Control, which is our quality inspection software company, there's also a blog as well. So that's all this time about the different types of sampling plans for QC inspections. Thanks for tuning in this time. We'll see you next time for another slideshow.